my name is dr pc patel professor and chief soil health physicist anand agriculture university and par university mati mati agro mart private limited anand gujarat the topic of uh, my youtube is forage maize and oats a potential source to boost fodder production so status and prospect of dairy farming in india so you can see from 1991 to 92 the milk production million ton has been increase in 2018 and 19 so the availability of the milk per capita is also increasing so during uh, 2018 19 about uh, 400 gram per day whereas uh, in uh, 91 92 it was lower then trend toward of total livestock population 1992 92 to 2012 so total number of livestock during uh, 30 years so you can see in 1992 the animals are 470 80 60 thousands number whereas in 2012 thousands number of animals so you can see the increasing trend 2007 there was a 529698 number of animals thousands so it is highest in 2007 the standing of india in the world so first ranking total livestock product population milk production buffalo population era beef production goat milk production total bovine population then india uh, cattle population goat population crystal population production epic industry by product aquaculture government all goat meat production so india as a second rank similarly in sixth india rank of sixth in poultry meat production eighth rank in duck production and ninth rank in camel population wool production in the world then livestock census first livestock census in india was conducted as dairy cattle census in 1919 so livestock census 2019 was 20th livestock census livestock census take place at every 5 years so you, you can see that uh, total livestock population 536.76 million so it increased 4.6 then total poultry population 851.81 million so it increased 16.8 milk animals 125.75 million so you can see that then uh, demand and supply estimate of dry and green forages million tons that is uh, work out by the igfr agency so you can see the source was uh, i told that it is igfr agency region 2050 so you can see that uh, 2010 the deficit was 10.95 green dry fodder and 35.66% green fodder in 2020 the deficit of dry fodder was 11.85 and green fodder 30.65 so in 2050 the deficit will be increasing 13.20% of dry fodder and 18.4% green fodder so supply and demand scenario of forage is presented in table 1 moreover in case of forage the regional seasonal deficiency are more important than the national deficiency as it is not economical to transport the forage over long distances furthermore 
The available forages are poor in quality and deficient in available energy, protein and minerals. Farmer maintain large herds of animals to compensate for the low productivity which adds the pressure on fodder and on other nature resources. So on the whole, despite the strong contribution of livestock to local livelihood and national in economics productivity level remain low. The milk productivity of crossbred cow, indigenous cow and buffalo in India is 7.02, and 4.80 liters per day respectively. So it is very low. The cattle and buffalo in India produce nearly 1000 kg milk per lactation as compared to 4,500 kg in Europe, more than 7,000 kg in the United States and 10,000 kg in Israel. So you can see that the crop productivity in India is very low, 1000 kg. So the low productivity of livestock is a matter of great concern. The three major sources of fodder supply in India are crop residue, cultivated fodder and fodder from common property resources like forest permanent pasture and grazing land. Presently, the country faces a net deficit of 30.65% grain fodder, 11.85% dry crop residue and 44% concentrated feed in gradient. IGFRI Vision 2050. So nearly two-thirds of total cost in livestock production is due to feeding and fodder. Hence, any attempt toward enhancing the ability of uh, feed and fodder and uh, economize the feed cost would result in better remuneration to livestock farmers. So you can see that uh, more than uh, two-thirds of total cost livestock production is due to feed and fodder. So when that cost is de decline, when we are increasing the green fodder, then we are getting more profit from the milking or livestock. The area under cultivated fodder is only 8.4 person, 8.4 million per hectare in India and has been static during last two decades. The scope for further increase seems to be very low due to demographic pressure for food crop. You can see that in India, the Human population is increasing fast and at present we have 140 crores and in 2050 it will be cross more than 175 crores. So there is a less chances for increasing this, there is a less scope to increase the land. So we have only chance to increase the crop productivity for unitarian time. So the productivity of some prominent cultivated forage is highly variable. Among the Karib forages, <coughs> sorghum, maize, cowpea, napier, and bajra hybrid and guinea grass have wide amplitude. However, during Rabi, the choice is limited to oat, lucerne, and bursin. Emphasis had to be made on area-specific new crop that can break the yield barriers and meet the challenge of fodder deficit. So India are facing the challenge of grain fodder, dry fodder. So first we, we will talk on maize crop. It is also known as corn. So the G maize among the different fodder crop is regarded as of the other important dual purpose crop. So it can be grown as fodder as well as the grain. Used in human diet as well as the animal feed. Maize has the potential to supply large amount of energy rich forage for daily animal diets and its fodder can safely be fed at all the stages of growth without any danger of oxalic acid, prussic acid or in case of sorghum. So in other forage crops there will be toxic compounds but in forage or in maize there is no any problem. So you can fed to the animal at any stage of the crop. So maize is an excellent source of energy and fiber for inclusion in the ration of ruminant livestock by feeding a proportion of forage maize in the ration together with grass silage feed intake and milk meat production will increase. When we feed the uh, forage maize along with the grasses silage or feed then the milk or meat production of the animal has been increased. Thus, 
Porridge has become a major constituent of ruminant ration in recent years as it includes on as dairy cows diet improve forage intake increases animal performance and reduce production cost in times of scarcity maize grain forage is a valuable source of fodder so during scarcity period maize is valuable forage to feed to the animal <coughs> then maize cereal fodder for monsoon rabi and summer season <coughs> so fodder maize we can grow in kharif for monsoon season rabi and summer season then uh, recommendation at anan agriculture university we have carried out the cutting stage so there are three stages tasseling stage silking stage and milking stage of the maize so on the basis of the three years result we have made recommendation that the results of field trials of anan agriculture university anan indicated that cutting of forage maize at milking stage yield at 38.8 and 24.0% higher diameter production than tasseling and silking stage respectively so the milking stage also produce 14.8 and 23.9% higher crude protein in than tasseling and silk stage of maize respectively hence we are recommended to the farmers that the farmers would have they cut the maize crop at milking stage so you can see here the milking stage the farmers would have the harvest the maize crop and feed to the animals for obtaining higher dry matter and crude protein yield this is very important for increasing the milk production then uh, recommendation second recommendation farmers of middle gujarat agro climatic zone 3 growing maize variety gujarat maize 2 in kharif are advised to apply every year multi micronutrient consisting of iron 2% manganese 0.5% zinc 0.5% for 0.2% and boron 0.5% equivalent to so government notified grade 5 for soil application 20 kg per hectare in soil having marginal status of zinc and iron to obtain higher forage yield to gladiator and net icbr and better quarter quality alternatively the micronutrient can be supplemented through 1% polyur application of multi micronutrient mixture having iron 2% manganese 0.5% zinc 8% copper 0.5% boron 0.5% equivalent to government notified grade 1 for zinc deficiency so at 20 and 30 and 40 days after sowing so we have to spray at 20 30 and 40 days after sowing of the maize crops so a common basal dose of 40 kg nitrogen 40 kg phosphorus and 40 kg nitrogen after 30 days of sowing also be applied so that experiment I have conducted when I was serving at main forest station from 1982 to 2006 at Anand Agriculture University. Then uh, you can uh, see that uh, maize crop is responsive to zinc deficiency. So you can see that uh, there will be deficiency of the zinc plant, and when there is zinc plant, then uh, the plant remains stunted. and here you can see that uh, response of zinc sulfate to maize crop <coughs> production productive potential of forage maize is influenced by and foliar application of zinc so sec and his coworker 2018 have conducted a field trial at tirupati during kharif 2014 to find out the response of fodder maize to different soil and foliar application of zinc the maximum plant height 362 cm leaf area index leaf stem ratio diameter production and green fodder yield 424 quintal per hectare were recorded with recommended dose of fertilizer plus soil application of 50 kg zinc sulfate along with foliar application of 0.2% zinc sulfate at 30 and 45 days after sowing hence it can be concluded that application of zinc had significant influence on the growth parameter and green fodder yield of fodder maize the results are in line with those of uh, patel idal 2007 at anam in gujarat so we have conducted this trial at anam also then production fodder production potential of maize grown for baby corn green corn so sekra and coworker 2015 conducted field experiment at zonal agriculture station viswariyar and canal farm mandya karnataka to study fodder production potential of maize grown for different purposes 
The experiment consisted of 10 treatment combinations that comprised of different maize base cropping system. The pull rate of three years revealed that Napier by the hybrid plus cow pea, crip, loose and rubby, recorded higher growth grain for yield that is 400 or 1488.30 quintal per hectare per year. Diameter yield and crude protein yield. And cultivation of maize for grain cob plus cow pea powder found the year recorded higher net return 1 1,58,715 rupees per hectare per year. So based on the result it can be concluded that maize grown for either green cob or baby corn intercrop with cow pea powder around the year is more remunerative than cultivation of perennial napier by dry intercropping with cow pea lucent to meet the powder requirement in peri urban area of Karnataka. So it is interesting that uh, when we take the hybrid napier, then we are not getting the higher crop production. But if we grow the maize grown, either green cob or baby corn, intercrop with cow pea powder, round the year is more remunerative than the cultivation perennial napier bajra. And moreover, when we take the intercrop cow pea, then the quality of the powder is increasing. If we know that when we fed the 10 kg green powder, <coughs> then we should have to apply 6 kg cereal powder and 4 kg uh, either legume or pulses powder. But you know that farmers are supply only the cereal crop. You know that humans are never take the rice or wheat, but the humans are taking the cereal along with the pulses and other crops for the bodybuilding. So similarly, animals also require cereal crop and legume crop for the better health and for higher milk production. Then utilization of baby corn by products and waste as livestock feed. So that gentleman picked picking of green crop from the field and the after picking of the green crops that a green order of the maize can be fed to the livestock and it is highly nutritive and highly remunerative. So receipt from baby corn you can see that there are many receipts from the baby corn has been prepared and you can also taste, taste in total also. Then production potential and economics of powder maize varieties shown under varying intercropping system with cow pay. So you can see here the African tall maize, the high varieties. So African tall maize powder can be used as green powder for animals. So you can grow as a sole crop or as an intercrop as well as tracing and storing it. The average yield of green powder is 12 to 16 ton per acre, that is 30 to 40 ton per hectare. Goats, cows and buffalo love to eat. So it is a high-yielding African tall maize. So African tall variety of powder maize as a sole and African tall variety of powder maize intercrop with cow pay in 2 8 to 1. So we have to take two lines of powder maize and one line of cow pea. Row ratio was found based for increasing yield potential and economics of powder maize in different intercropping system. Another advantage of the growing uh, cow pea intercrop, so it adds uh, nitrogen in the soil. And you can cut up the 10 to 20% nitrogen requirement to the maize crop because the cow pea had nitrogen in soil. So it is a best practice and moreover animal get the quality powder. Suppose you are growing sole crop of powder maize then you are apply only cereal crop to feed to the cereal crop. But when you are taking the uh, powder maize along with the cow pea then you can give the balance and quality order to the animals. 
so animal health will be improved and we are getting the higher milk production then second crop oat so you can see that uh, oat can be grown in a winter season in a uh, winter season you can see that uh, the growth of the sorghum then hybrid napier is low due to cold condition but the growth of the oats and barley crops is greater because that crop low the cold condition so you can see that a oat variety cant is famous for grain fodder and it is a seed of the oat variety cant so oat avena satava is an economically important crop and ranked sixth in the world in cereal production following wheat maize rice barley and sorghum it is an important cereal and known as dual purpose crop in temperate and subtropical area being a highly nutritious cereal useful for human consumption as well as feed and fodder for milk and drought animal so it you can be grown as a dual purpose so fodder can be fed to the animals and the grain feed by the human being as well as the animal also in india oat is exclusively grown for fodder in different state like uh, uttar pradesh haryana punjab madhya pradesh gujarat and some part of orissa bihar and west bengal so cultivated oat is a cool season crop i told that it love cold season that require cool temperature from germination to grain filling stage for maximum yield the crop can be grown at temperature varying between 5 to 30 degree centigrade however optimum tree requisite temperature requirement is 25 degree centigrade the optimum temperature for growing it to hence on enhance the number of cut of grain forage oat can be best cultivated in well drained rich loam as well as it can tolerate acid soil up to ph of 4.5 and it is also fairly tolerant to salinity <coughs> so the seed requirement for oat for grain forage is 100 kg when you grow for dual purpose it requires 60 kg per hectare so multi cut oat cereal fodder for winter so you can take the multi cut means you can take two cut of the oat so continuous supply of grain forage to the animal is required for obtaining higher milk production and it also reduce the cost of feeding so oat can be harvested for single cut as well as two cuts in both the system either uh, one cutting or two cutting forage production is remain similar but we are getting um, fodder in two installments so they can supply grain forage for a longer period to the animal so there is a advantage in two cutting management so we can supply the grain fodder for a longer period whereas in a one cutting we have to harvest only once so they are not obtain the grain forage for longer period so we have conducted this trial at anand agriculture university when i was uh, serving at main forest station so the farmers are advised to grow oat variety cant or jho 822 with the application of atk nitrogen reactor for getting higher green and dry matter yield as well as crude protein nitrogen should be applied in three spread 50 and 50 as basal and 25 percent each after 30 days of sowing and after first cut so that should be two cutting first 50 days after sowing and second cut at 50 percent flowering stage so there are two cutting keep clipping height of oat in first cut should be two inches means minimum means five centimeter and keep sharp sickle to harvest oat also keep in mind that frequent cutting at early maturity will continue to deplete carbohydrate reserve so single cutting and two cutting so both are system are there but when we are taking two cut then first cutting should be harvested at 50 days after sowing and they keep the clipping height from the ground level 2 inches that is 5 cm and 
we require a sharp sickle to harvest oat otherwise if it is not sharp can you cut the oat with the sickle then there will be less chances of the regrowth and crop production has been declined because we have experience and therefore i have written that the, it is a very important clipping height is also important and requires sharp sickle to harvest oat then dual purpose oat a highly nutritious and dual purpose cereal crop so dual purpose oat under minimum irrigation oat give higher fodder yield per unit area and time due to its multicut nature regular supply of fodder over a long period of time so oat may be safe to claim that oat can bring a winter forage grain revolution so oat is the only crop cereal crops give the higher forage production and second one is maize so in view of over increasing human and livestock population together with limited availability of land resources for cultivated fodder has led to lead the forage breeder to tailor multi purpose variety that can fit in different cropping system so farmers of middle gujarat zone growing oat variety can for dual purpose are advised to apply 80 kg nitrogen per hectare 50% at sowing and 50% after first cut 50 55 days after sowing to obtain higher forage and seed yield as well as maximum net return so dual purpose crop is a highly remunerative so dual purpose oats under dual system delay in first cut that is from 60 to 80 days after sowing resulted in a significant increase in fodder and seed yield over the earlier cutting so when you cutting earlier 40 50 days after sowing then you are getting less production so every increment of dose of apply phosphorus up to 40 kg phosphorus per hectare resulted in a significant improvement in forage so wood crop also highly responsive to the phosphorus fertilizer and straw yield over the lower doses so we have to remember that under dual system delay in first cut that is from 60 to 80 days resulted in significant increase in fodder and seed yield over the earlier cutting so we should have to harvest at after 60 to 80 days after sowing for obtain a higher fodder as well as seed yield <coughs> 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 then in a um, fodder maize there is a no any toxic problem but in oat there is a toxic problem nitrate accumulation and utilization in fodder oat varieties as affected by different nitrogen levels so the excessive use of nitrogen can lead to deteriorate soil health and accumulation of nitrate nitrogen in fodder above the permissible limit greater than 5000 ppm which is toxic to animal some of the crops such as sudan grass palmillet and oats are potent accumulate of nitrate so when the animal consume an excessive level of nitrate the rumen become overburdened with nitrate converting to nitrite often with not enough energy to convert the nitrite to ammonia to protein production this excess of nitrite is trans located to the small intestine where it is absorbed into the blood stream nitrate then bind to hemoglobin the oxygen carrying compound in blood converting it to methoglobin methoglobin is unable to transport oxygen thereby severely diminishing the amount of oxygen being transported in the blood animal can have chronic toxicity where they are exposed to low levels of elevated nitrate for an extended period of time for accurate toxicity which is an injection ingestion of a large amount of nitrate in a short period of time both type can have significant implication on animal performance so there are some cases when energy deficient and nitrogen regulation within the plant will occur so nitrate accumulation we are observing in stress condition so during drought then mineral deficiency studies have found that if some soil nutrients are deficient particularly phosphorus potassium and sulfur there may be an increased likelihood of nitrate toxicity therefore we have to carry out the soil analysis before sowing of the oat crop 
and if the deficiency then we have to apply through the chemical fertilizer then high levels of soil nitrate so this can occur after excessive application of fertilizer or manual leading to large amount of soil nitrogen this can be localized for area over a the entire field so don't apply the excessive dose of nitrogen to the wood crop herbicide damage application of some herbicide may increase nitrate levels in plant so preventing nitrate toxicity so i told that test your soil nutrient status and fertilizing approximately may help to avoid any accumulation occurring from nit nutrient balance imbalance avoid cutting or grazing at peak nitrate level don't graze or harvest the lower portion of the plant so nitrate will typically be highest in the lower one third of the plant system cutting or grazing above the this portion will reduce the likelihood of excessive nitrate ingestion sample your field before harvest or feed out there are in field qualitative test available which can help with harvest management most commercial forage labs also offer analysis to obtain the exact nitrate level in your forage so we have observed that soil fertility management is not only influence fodder crop yield it effect on forage quality which is very important for milk production of milk animal therefore dairy farmer requested carry out soil before sowing planting of fodder crop and they should have to apply fertilizer to fodder crop in soil as per soil test value so i told that uh, i am working as a chief soil health specialist in seom agri clinic agri laboratory bhavnagar gujarat so we have the icp oes scientific instrument about 1 uh, crore rupees so therefore please uh, send your soil and water and plant sample at the following reputed soil testing laboratory for perfect soil analysis and expert advice on manure and fertilizer for higher crop production and quality we will give expert advice to the dairy farmer for higher for its crop yield quality and maintaining soil fertility and sustainability so i am giving the advice to the farmers on the basis of the soil test value so the address is a seom agri clinic and agri laboratory bhavnagar gujarat india our website is http seoma.in our helpline number plus 9163595959 so my name is dr pc patel and my email is patel pc12 at the gmail.com so again i repeat my name is dr pc patel my email is patel pc12 at the rate of gmail.com so if you like my video youtube then don't forget the subscribe to the video and if you have any problem related to fodder crop production either oat or maize lucerne sorghum or elsewhere hybrid napier then you can ask me and another thing i i, I am adding here that uh, when you have the soil is a uh, saline then you can grow the fodder crop as a barley so barley crop you can it is also dual crop and you can grow the uh, barley crop as a fodder as well as a grain purpose and we have also conducted that trial at a uh, main forest station anand agriculture university anand and we are getting the good results so thank you very much